Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here. Today I'm going to show you my latest, and I don't know if it's greatest or not, a uh, CRT hack. This is uh, perhaps my third uh, really in-depth CRT hack. CRT cathode ray tube. These are the old glass televisions. I found this one on the sidewalk with the remote given away for free. Uh, the one problem is that this sucker only outputted RF video. Or I'm sorry, only accepted RF video. Which, for those that don't know, is that. The coaxial jack in the back. And so my goal for this guy was to add modern connections to it. Specifically S-video and composite video, since I knew there's a high chance that the Jungle IC would accept those. Uh, it has a Toshiba TA788N, I believe is the name of it, the uh, the Jungle IC that does all the video processing, and um, it's quite a pain to work with. The schematics available for it are really not helpful and have a bunch of misinformation. TA8879N, yeah. And, um, you know, this thing is... Uh, you know, I posted some of the schematics in my other video. This is kind of a part two video. But I have all the uh, data sheets and such here. Uh, these are my notes so far. Um, but I ended up having to do a lot of things for this guy. And it was kind of interesting. For the most part, it was pretty fun. And I learned a lot. Um, so, yeah, I, got, I posted my other video because I got composite video input. Which, for those who don't know, is the yellow plug here. Here's all my plugs. They're all installed. It's all... Uh, working now but I was very excited when I originally got this going and um, I thought hey it's not gonna be too much harder to add S video and uh, just be done and call it a day turns out things got a little bit complicated so I'm going to show you now what the, the circuit board looks like here and of course being careful not to touch it there's a lot of voltage going on over here but basically my first issue uh, my first thing I wanted to do was figure out a way to switch the video. I didn't want to put a mechanical switch on the side. I'd actually have to have two of them to switch between composite and S-video, and it would just look kind of janky. Um, this has a bunch of switches on the front right here, and this one, this enter one, is actually superfluous because the menu system remembers your settings without you needing to press enter. So I use that as my candidate for switching between the different video channels. Um, I have this one hooked up to my Sega Game Gear right now through the S-Video. See if I can get it to uh, boot a game here. Uh, I got the EverDrive flash cart. Doing this upside down is kind of tricky. Let's boot up a Sonic though. I think that's Triple Trouble, Sonic and Tails 2. So while that's booting up, I'll show you uh, some of the circuitry going on here. So yeah, I, I uh, repurposed this Enter button as the AV switching. And so to do that, I used a 74HC4053 multiplexer, which is that chip right there. Um, and then to do the actual switching from logic high to logic low, I needed a two-bit counter because I'm switching uh, multiple signals here. So I used a 74HC74, which is the chip on top. Um, the 14 pin SOIC chip there. Now, I had a couple issues with this. The first was that the switching was really, really problematic. It would only register it half the time. Other times it would switch two AV modes instead of one with per button press. So I had to build a HC, a 74HC14 uh, with a couple other parts um, to function as a debouncing circuit. That's a Schmidt trigger and an inverter that goes to the 7414 up there. So I got that done, right? I'm thinking, okay, finally done. It's switching. Uh, but I had a new problem. New problem was this circuit right here, the video switcher, the 74053, has what's called on resistance. It has resistance added to the video signals coming in um, through the chip when you're switching it. I guess it's just old technology and I should have used a newer one, but these are really cheap and plentiful. So that resistance comes out to about 75 ohms, and that um, made the signal far too weak to actually sync up and get a proper picture. Even if I put the contrast up all the way, it still just looked like terrible. 
And uh, I did that with all three of the incoming signals, chroma, luma, and composite video. So I ended up having to build another circuit, which was which is this guy over here, the THS7314. It's a three-channel video amplifier. So all three signals go in there first before going to the multiplexer, which is that switcher 74053. And, um, and then I found out because all three of those were going through um, that because Chroma and Luma are separated for S-Video, I would get double the drop for S-Video because get I get double the resistance. So I had to build yet another amplifier for the color of S-Video, which is that Class A transistor right there. It's a 2SC5488 transistor. It's a general purpose NPN. And um, that functions to kind of give the chrominance a little bit of a boost so that I don't have to change the color settings every time I switch from S-Video to composite. Um, a lot of this stuff was made to really help the end user, which is going to be my friend as a present, uh, not have to adjust a bunch of settings and then uh, complain to me later. Uh, lastly, the incoming audio is stereo, but this thing only does mono. So I use two resistors to two 10k resistors to join the audio signal, but that gives me a 10 decibel drop. Also, this this IC, the the TA8879N, the jungle IC, which is a 56 pin chip. Um, you know, this is the underside of it. Um, switches the incoming audio signal and adds a six decibel gain for the television. It doesn't do that for external audio, so. I had to build an audio amp as well, which is what this guy is. That's an op amp with a six decibel gain. Um, and it's uh, just a general purpose single supply, uh, single op amp actually. And uh, okay, so I was like, okay, I think I've got this all figured out. Everything was working and sounding great. Um, and the last, hopefully, cross fingers, the last headache that this thing gave me was that the voltage that I was pulling all this from, which was this 12 volt supply rail right here, um, I was dropping that down to five volts using a uh, 7805 regulator, something like this. And that turns the excess voltage into heat. It's a little wasteful, but I figured, you know, I'm not powering, yeah, I'm powering a lot of chips, but they're also not uh, big current suckers. They don't have high wattage um, going on, but uh, this thing hated it. it. started to droop the voltage over time, and the, I thought I was all done. I had it all put back together, but then it started to lose the signal. And so I really had to find a way to, to make this as efficient as possible because it really is made within the limits of the circuitry that it's meant to ship with. And so I built this, or I really just you know bought this and put this in. I could have built one, but it's saving time. This is a DC to DC converter which has a much higher efficiency and everything runs through there from the 12 volt supply. So far it's only drooped to about 11.8, 11.79 uh, on a f almost fully white screen. It goes down to 11.74, 77. I added that larger capacitor to kind of deal with the spikes um, from that. And so far so good. It hasn't you know, caused any serious issues. We'll see with time. Um, the reason I have to do this and I can't just use the main supply rail is because this has a hot chassis design and so the ground is fully isolated from the external voltage input um, which originally make this would make this really dangerous for um, using it on AC power because you can have voltage feedback going to your console or whatever's plugged in. So to eliminate that I um, realized that this actually also accepts a 12 volt battery input. So I'm powering this off an external 12 volt 5 amp power supply wired in and hacked in to where the uh, AC used to go. This used to be an AC wall input right there. And I drilled out some plastic, put two screws in it, you know, and basically mimicked the original plastic that was there with a 12 volt socket now. So looks like it's all ready to go. It'll swap between RF and... Um, composite and S-Video now. There's a third setting because of the two-bit counter. There's four four actual output modes. That third setting can just be avoided. It's actually RF missing chrominance. Um, that had to do with having to switch the uh, chroma signal in. So here right now is 
upside down Sonic Triple Trouble uh, for the Game Gear, or Sonic and Tails 2 as the Japanese release is. It's a beautiful game, beautiful game, does not get enough love. If you overclock your Game Gear, this is actually a much better game too. It's got a little bit of slowdown. Uh, this is running off a uh, Game Gear TV out hack. Um, I've built these over the years, but um, Tim Worthington, aka Vile Tim, makes a very good one, which is the one I'm currently using actually. And um, as you can see, the output's fantastic. This is running through S Video right now. And if I uh, use this uh, remote that came with the TV, I can turn up the jams here. Um, and I'll, of course, I have the uh, Eliminate Down going on over here on the Genesis. Fantastic shooter. Fantastic game. So yeah, hopefully my friend enjoys this. Um, it doesn't switch the external audio. That would require more multiplexing and more headache. So you do have to plug in uh, your own your own uh, audio signal uh, when you're changing game systems. But it does seem to work pretty well, and uh, I'm happy with it so far. We'll see how much, how far, and how long it lasts. Uh, quick note to all you guys or gals doing CRT hacking out there, uh, make sure you know what you're doing because this stuff has very high voltages, especially by the flyback, which is the transformer in the corner there, that can kill you. Um, thousands of volts coming out of that guy. So and I've, I've actually shocked myself pretty bad before on one of these. So make sure you know what you're doing. Um, check out the safety precautions there. Um, there's plenty of information on the internet for that. And, um, you know, don't, uh, don't sue me if you get hurt opening one of these guys up um, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun if you do feel adventurous and want to make use of these things that people are throwing out uh, thanks for checking out the video this is Sega Sonic fan signing out